question that I've gotten reoccurring in a number of my videos is to show my, my canoe. People have noticed uh, the canoe, they see me standing in it all the time. Uh, people have commented, they see that <laughs> I'll fish with somebody else and somebody else is standing in it and so they notice it's really stable and I pack a lot of stuff into it and people are like, well, what, you know, what is it? What do you have? And, you know, what's your setup? So, this is going to be the quick version and after this is going to be the full extended version and you'll see by the surroundings that I'm filming this at two different times of the year. Uh, so this is hopefully it's going to be a little five minute overview. Just want to show you the canoe real quick and, um, you know, who makes it and what it's all about and, and how I have my setup. So let's take a look. So here's what it is. Sports Pal by Myers. All right. Myers is the manufacturer. They call it the Sports Pal. And they've been making these for a long time. I think they've been making these since the, the 70s, maybe even the 60s. And they all kind of have the same look. You'll notice them. They're immediately identifiable. They have these foam, what they call sponsons on the side. And they've always been foam lined with these metal ribs. Uh, holding the foam in and also giving the canoe some structural rigidity. So if you ever see a canoe that looks like this, it's probably the Sports Pal by Myers. If you get online and start checking these things out though, there's a kind of a sister company I think, uh, and it's called uh, Radisson. And one is a Canadian manufacturer and one is a US manufacturer. Radissons are a little bit lighter, but it's a thinner gauge aluminum. The Sports Pal is a little bit heavier, and it's a little bit of a thicker gauge aluminum. But in the case of this canoe, heavy is, re is uh, very relative. Um, the, the three things I was looking for, uh, and I'm going to weave the, uh, the heavy into this right now, three things I was looking for when I was, I was getting my first craft to get on the water was I wanted it to be lightweight. Um, and this is all going to be subjective as to where you are in the country and what's available to you. But for me, I wanted the ability to access little bodies of water. Now this one's nice. You know, I have a little gravel drive that comes up to it but uh, here in New Jersey it's chock full of these little tiny ponds and there's no real means of getting to them there's no driveway there's not some of them it's hardly even a trail and those could be some of the gems the really untouched ones where nobody can get a boat on you can only fish from shore so number one to me is I love love getting on Google Maps and Google Earth and trying to find these little hole in the walls and being the guy to get a boat on them you know rather than fishing or trying your best to fish from shore. A lot of places you can't even fish from shore. So number one to me was lightweight. This canoe here is 13 feet 10 inches. You can see how wide it is. It's quite a wide vessel. Guess how much this weighs? Not with all the stuff in it of course, but the canoe uh, with the bench seats weighs 58 pounds. That's right, 58 pounds. And what I do and what I have done is I just put it on my shoulder and you can hike it in as far as you want to. Realistically, it does get a little, you know, it, it starts dragging after a while. The 58 pounds is kind of heavier than it sounds just because it's unwieldy. Uh, but I've taken it about a quarter mile and you can take it further. You just have to take a little break, take a breather. Uh, if you have a body of water that's, you know, tucked into the woods and you just want to literally push this thing through the woods, put a backpack on, you know, strap one or two rods to the inside of the canoe, and uh, just a paddle as well to strap them in there. They have some straps I actually come with. You could access any body of water that I don't think anybody else would be able to get to. Even on kayaks. You know, like kayaks, they have the little, the things you wheel them on. Well, some, there's some trails I know you're not going to wheel anything through. <laughs> there's, there's not even a trail. You're kind of just bushwhacking through the woods or whatever. You can get this craft anywhere you can pretty much get yourself. Um, might take a little doing, but if you're determined to be that person to access those bodies of water and get a line in and, and see what they hold, this Sports Papa Myers is the craft to do it for you. They have a couple different sizes. I think this one here is the best compromise, this 14 foot size. It's great for two people. I regularly fish out of here with someone in front. Today I'm going solo and so I have my little video set up there. Uh, but yeah, when I'm fishing with a second person, the other thing I get to, in addition to the lightweight, is the stability, right? That's number two, and I'll roll that in right here, talking about fishing with somebody else. Stability. When I'm in this canoe, I'm standing. All right, that was an imperative for me when, when getting the craft was, I don't want to be forced to sit, or I don't want to feel like the thing is sketchy, and you know, maybe I can stand, maybe I can't. No, I want to stand. I want to treat it like a bass boat or like a john boat, and I want to stand for casting distances, for hook setting power, for skipping, 
for you know seeing in the water with polarized glasses you know getting that better angle I want to be standing if I'm fishing and I do <laughs> the only time I sit in this thing is sometimes if you know I'm tying on a new lure just want to concentrate or just to take a little bit of a break from standing eat my lunch but I never sit because I feel like I have to like there's a st uh, stability issue now <clears throat> so that's the beautiful beautiful thing about this guys is the stability they're just amazingly stable crafts <clears throat> And I was mentioning I fish with somebody else in front. I'll probably be rolling in some clips. But yeah, I'll fish with another, you know, grown man. And usually we're both standing. That's how stable this is. Now, admittedly, when you have somebody else in the craft, <clears throat> excuse me, when two people are standing, you, you kind of have to be aware a little bit. You know, it's not dangerous. We wouldn't do it if there was, you know, if we felt like we were going to go in. But you feel it a little bit more than when you're just by yourself, right? But uh, it's totally, totally doable, and, you know, this is my fourth year owning this canoe. We've never had anybody go in, never even really had any close calls. So uh, stability, guys, is, is really the second major, major attribute to, uh, to the Sports Pal series. And the last thing is capacity, and you can see that. That's pretty obvious. I wanted something that was very capacious. You know, I looked at all the, the kayaks out there. And, uh, you know, the John boats were out immediately because, for me, again, I want something lightweight. And I can't, you know, hike a John boat into, you know, a little hole in the walls. So John boats were out. I think that might be the right choice for you. If you don't have little lakes and ponds to access, if you're looking at bigger bodies of water, John boat might be the obvious choice. But if you do have stuff like this, it comes down to then canoes and kayaks. And the kayaks were very similar in weight. Uh, didn't have the stability. There's some out now, there's a lot that are geared towards fishermen, even bass fishermen, but they just don't have the outright stability of this. This is wider and longer. Um, you know, that was the other thing. And then the, the capacity. Like, I like the kayaks. Some of them are very organized. You have spots for everything. But here, literally, you could bring as much stuff as, as you own. And you just dump it in wherever you want. I mean, you want to be organized, be organized. But if you just have a ton of crap, you want to bring coolers and you know, just bring anything you want. Here's one marine battery. Uh, some of the bigger bodies of water I go to, I put on two marine batteries, plus all my gear, plus a friend's gear, a cooler. You know, you could just load it up, and that's not an option on your kayaks. And again, at 58 pounds. <laughs> uh, I have a little car. You'll probably see a clip of that somewhere in this video, too. And, and this all goes on to a little Honda Fit. You know, you don't need some big truck. You don't need a, a trailer. Just throw this onto whatever you own. Just get a, you know, rooftop carrier. Really, really dynamic. I mean, that's the name of the game here, guys, is that this thing just does so many things. It gets you into so many different bodies of water, big or small. Uh, it's just a, just an amazing craft. And, uh, geez, there's something else I was just thinking as I was saying that to you. Um, oh, that was the other thing. I was talking about I, I roll with somebody else in front a lot of the time. The other thing, guys, is talking about a dynamic craft... Uh, John boat, you can put a lot of people on, right? Say you have kids, or you want to go out with your girlfriend or your wife, whatever. Depending on the size of the John boat, you could load in a couple people, right? And everybody's good. Kayak? It's out of the question. I mean, I've seen two-person kayaks, but, you know, it's, it's not really, you know, you're not going to be standing and fishing and loading a lot of gear in. Therein is the last thing about this, you know? Um, I've gone on here with my, uh, my now wife and her, her niece and nephew. Four of us in this craft doing some little bobber fishing. You can't do that with a kayak, you know? So, again, guys, the foremost thing is you have to identify what your needs are and the bodies of water you're going to fish. But you just don't, the only thing you give up with this over the John boat is a little bit of space and a little bit of stability. But otherwise, it's firing on all cylinders. Has the capacity, has the light weight, and um, has the stability. Again, at 58 pounds, hiking into wherever you want. So, that's pretty much it, guys. And I'll just give you the once over here. As I was just talking about, holds quite a bit of stuff. Four people, or 615 pounds. You can put a two horse on here. When you buy it, it does come with this trolling motor mount, right? You have to just screw it on, but it, it comes with it. Everything's pre drilled. You just screw it into place. And that's what I use. I got a Minkota 34 pound thrust here. Looking to get a little bit of a bigger one next year. Um, comes with the bench seats. As you can see, everything is foam lined, and that makes it really, really quiet. So when you're stepping on this, or if you drop something, it doesn't have that booming, echoing sound that you would get on a metal bottom floor of like a John boat, or even like the plastic of a, uh, of a kayak. So this is very, very quiet. 
and you can just see how much stuff it holds. I'm bringing, I think, six rods today. That's a big tackle bag. That holds seven uh, 3,700 size Plano boxes. There's my book bag, my uh, Lorenz, uh, the Elite 5. I gotta, just gotta get into some deeper water before I put them on. It's just the way this mount here is. I can't do it from shore. Uh, yeah, well, you could see. You could see what I got here. I got my tripod set up. These ribs are cool because you could tie things down to them. So that gives me all the support I need here. I've been rocking uh, a tripod now for four years doing that system there. And it is rock, rock solid. Has never budged a half an inch. It's perfect. And I throw the uh, battery up there just for a little bit of balance. Got to represent my friends at Tackle Warehouse. Always find the newest and coolest stuff there. And that's pretty much it, guys. Sports Pal by Myers. You're just not going to get a more dynamic craft for this. Price on these guys is uh, it's about $1,000 all in. And again, that comes with the trolling motor bracket, two bench seats. It comes with the two oars. Oars are nice. They even have the uh, branding on them, as you can see there, Sports Pal branding. Um, comes with two life vests. And uh, I think that's pretty much it. I mean, other things, of course, are just pre-stalled, like you have the the handles here on the front you have the the other handle and you have the uh to kind of like the anchor or the rope tie down or if you're uh, you know tying it to a dock um i don't think i mentioned these guys here these just give you an additional level of stability um if you really really got it weighed down you got a lot of stuff going on in it when the water hits this you just have that much more foam to help you uh you know balance out uh, I have never, like I said, I've never had even a close call on this thing. And I've tried. When I first got it, I really rocked back and forth. I wanted to test the limits of this thing. You know, warm water, shallow situation. You know, if I went in, you know, no problem. Just take a little swim. You can, you, I tried. I tried to lean into this thing. I was like, I'm going to, trying to tip it, right? Trying to see what the limits are before you really start taking it out for, for real fishing. Can't do it. You, you, you can't tip it. Not unless you're like, Maybe 300 pounds and, you know, pulling on the side or something. But in normal fishing, can you fall out? Sure. You know, that depends on your agility and your balance, stability. Can, can someone fall out? You can fall out of a john boat. I mean, you know. But uh, can you tip this thing? Can't tip it. <laughs> you just can't tip it. Um, but in terms of stability, again, it is really, really stable. By yourself, it, it fishes, you know. It's just, I never think about my balance when I'm fishing by myself. I never think. I just fish. That's not a concern of mine. I'm not thinking like I'm correcting or, you know, doing something. I, I just fish. I just worry about what I'm, I'm doing on the water. When I fish with a second person up front, then, because you're both kind of always correcting a little bit, then you will feel it and you're a little bit aware of it, but it's not dangerous, right? It doesn't, if it was, we would never do it. But you just have an awareness that, yeah, you, you feel the thing moving a little bit and you're kind of, you know, kind of correcting a little bit. <clears throat> All right, um, I definitely went over five minutes, but I really wanted to harp on this. Like I said, a lot of people have asked me about it. This thing is just amazing. This, this is, I love this thing. I just love every time I take it out. It's just so satisfying. <laughs> it's just firing on all, all those cylinders of a craft I wanted. You know, and I know I'm not alone in this. I know there's, a, you know, this is not a weird thing to have a craft that you could access those little bodies of water, to have something that's light and easy to manage have something that's stable and holds a lot i think a lot of people are looking for you know uh for that criteria and and this is it as far as uh you know the thing is people sleep on canoes i don't know we're in like the time of kayaks like it's all bass fishing kayaks and kayak this kayak that guys seriously take a look at not all canoes you know not all canoes this one here this manufacturer is building this and i really believe that this is the answer for a lot of you who maybe don't have anything yet if you're fishing from shore you want to get a little something, this is it. This is it. Put it on your little, like I said, I got a little economy car. I got a little Honda Fit. I've been toting this thing around for four years on top of a Honda Fit. And I go out 25, 30 times a year, at least. Um, yeah, just get yourself a good roof rack, super stable. You know, I'm always an hour away from where I, wherever I drive. Uh, I guess that would maybe be the other concern, like stability on the car. I've got so many trips on this thing. Get yourself a good roof rack. Don't use those foam blocks. Get yourself a good Thule or, what is it, Yakima roof rack. Don't cheap out on that. Get yourself some good straps. Tie it down good. And over the past four years, I'm probably coming up on 100 and 
130, 150 trips going all over the state of New Jersey, you know, an hour, hour and a half, every single time. Never, never has this thing budged on my little, my little Honda Fit. So, uh, again, guys, that's just an aside. I'm trying to cover all bases depending on what, you know, what you guys have out there and what your setup is. So, all right. I think that's pretty much it. My short version turned out to be a long version. Maybe I'll just make it two videos. But um, I'll hop up here real quick. Give you a top side view. That's it, guys. Sports Pal by Myers. Again, 14-foot model. If you have any questions, please ask. I loved, love talking about this thing. As you can tell, I'm excited. And this is four years into owning it. I'm still this excited. So, all right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Hey, guys. One other thing. Just wanted to take you on board here. Um, just show you uh, out on the water what I got going on here. So, uh, indeed, keeping it real. Uh, it's I'm not trying to be all crazy organized. This is... You know, just how things play out when I'm fishing. Um, I got my kind of go-to stuff here, stuff I want to use today, and quick access. Just got all my tackle below that. Uh, here's the HDI 5. And uh, this bracket here, and I'll annotate in the video the manufacturer. I'll just let you know, this one doesn't work well in a canoe. The angle of that piece there, the slant that they cut it out, doesn't match up with the uh, <clears throat> kind of like the straight up squared edge of this canoe. So I have it in place, but uh, it's, it's real bootleg. I actually have zip ties that are preventing it from moving because just the clamp that's here, even with that tightened all the way down, if I go, you know, full speed with my, on my trolling motor, which obviously isn't much, this thing will kind of, the whole assembly will just will just tilt in place and the uh, transducer will start, you know, lifting up and going towards the back. <clears throat> so I love the fish finder. It's really, um, it's really cool. It's very, very easy to use. Uh, you don't have to know anything with this one. It's, it's, uh, very intuitive. But, uh, just a heads up there, guys, this mount, um, it just isn't so great. And it's, it's like one of the only ones out there that's marketed towards a canoe, but gets the job done. But I'm definitely looking to make something myself. Uh, apart from that, I don't know. <laughs> you just see it's... Uh, if you didn't have a lot of stuff, you could actually just probably lay down in here. Uh, underneath these things. There's been times where I really wanted to take a nap. Just get out here on the water. It's nice and calm. But uh, I do bring a lot of stuff. Uh, tripod's up there. Have a quick... You can't see it because it's on the camera right now, but at the bottom of it is a quick detach mechanism. You know, so I'm not screwing it on and off all the time. I can grab it real quick to, uh, you know, take a picture and just snap it back on. Got some cup holders. Uh, oh, this is one cool thing I'd like to mention. Because the foam is everywhere, and they just you can make anything an impromptu lure holder. And I always just put some things that I've used, and just to get them out of the way and keep them clean, I'll throw things on the side like that. You can put, you know, anywhere you want. It's just foam. In terms of space, you can see me standing here. Um, you know, you don't have to go crazy like standing out to the sides. You, know, you just stand whatever. Turn around. You know. um, you, you, like I said, you could rock it. But it's not a big deal. Trolling motor mounts there. Um, you know, don't get it confused, guys. It doesn't have the space of a, of a true boat bass boat or even John boat but in terms of rods you can see what I do here I think I got one two three four five I got six with me today and uh, I'll lay some going back like this that keeps them out of the way they just kind of stay there oh there's more uh, good capacity underneath here I got another tackle bag and other stuff underneath that section and uh, yeah and then the other rods you just lay wherever so that's pretty much it, guys. I'm going to uh, pull up my anchor now and uh, just hit another spot. And maybe I'll take you along with me. You could just see, uh, maybe speed wise, what the 34 uh, pound does for, uh, for a canoe of this size. There's my anchor. Just want to show you guys this too. It's a, it's this shape, which I found to be the best. I used to have one of those ones that was like the hook. It was only like a pound or two, and it like the hooks popped out. But 
if you're in a rocky area like with big kind of boulder type rocks you're gonna lose that thing I lost a few of them uh, this is just one of these rounded off ones and this is eight pounds and I've never had it drag me once as long as you're in something where it can you know nudge in a little bit that's it you really don't need more than eight pounds if you want to step it up to ten I guess you could but I've never seen the need for it and there we go Again, this is a 34 pound. This is a Cabela's model. Usually they jump from, I think, 30 to 30, 30 to 36 or 40, I forget. But uh, yeah, it's a five speed. It's not the Endora Max. But uh, you, know, you cover water pretty well with it. Stand up here. We were just coming from over there already. You got a pretty good tick. Okay, yeah, I just wanted to show you guys the trolling motor. 34 really is fine, but like I said, I was gonna I'm going to get a bigger one. Um I think 40 would probably be the optimal size, and not actually for covering water like this, but for getting out of um, when I'm in dense weeds. My friend has a 45, and that really just chops right through, uh, you know, with good intensity. Whereas this 34 tends to hang up a lot, and I have to go back and forth. So uh, between the 30 to the 40, they use a different, uh, the main assembly on the bottom uh, where the armature is. It's a much larger one, and it just generates a whole lot more torque. So. Um, if you were to get this canoe or uh, you know something similar to it, I think 40 is a, is a good pound rating to get you where you need to go as well as to have the torque to move you through some of the thick stuff. So we are all the way over there just when I started this two minutes ago. And there we are. All right guys. everybody so um, out here on the water and as you can see I'm standing and paddling and I'm not doing this to put on a show or pull some stunt it's just that it's so easy because the craft is is absolutely so stable much of the time uh, when I'm going along paddling if it's a small pond and I don't have my trolling motor I'm standing and the reason for that is because with your polarized glasses, you want to see what's going on. Pay attention to the bottom, see if there's spawning beds, cover, whatever the case may be. You want that steep angle looking down into the water as opposed to a very slight angle if you were sitting. That steep angle coupled with the polarization is what allows you to cut down on that glare and see right in. So again, another reason for the advantageous of a stable craft uh, being able to stand the entire time I'm doing anything, um, whether it's paddling. Now I'm paddling here because this is a small body of water, but typically I'll have my trolling motor. And this is one of the things that to me is really awesome. Uh, you know, one of the things I didn't like about a kayak was there's the foot powered ones, but then any time I want to get someplace I have to sit down and, and, and paddle it with my feet. I like that there's no battery, that there's no propulsion to go bad, but I have to be sitting to go anywhere, or if I even want to troll someplace, I have to be sitting. Um, the other option for, for kayakers is you have to be standing, and then you have your paddle. And you know, I've seen the rigs, you have a little stand up here thing here, and you rest your paddle there. But what I like about this, very similar to a traditional bass boat or a john boat or anything else, is that I have my trolling motor typically would be mounting on the side, and I can go, you know, 30, 40 feet off a shoreline just like you would in a bass boat. I can put the trolling motor on low, point my direction, and then just cover water. And just cast that shoreline covering water, covering water. I don't have to paddle. I don't have to stop what I'm doing. I don't have to sit down. And so you, the craft is mobile in the same way that a traditional boat is. Um, but it, it's, you know, you just have those abilities. You just have those abilities. So that would be a, a, a mirror of, say, like a John boat or a bass boat. And it's something that you really don't have a parallel to uh, with a kayak. The kayak you ha kind of have to pick when you're doing propulsion and when you're doing your fishing. 
Uh, again, unless you're doing one of the seated ones, but then you're seated, you're not standing. Okay, so like I said, this is the Sports Pal Canoe by Myers. And uh, what I want to do is, even before I take it off the canoe, if uh, you don't have to have a truck, guys, you don't have to have a pickup or anything big. I had this, uh, as you can see, it's a very small car. It's a Honda Fit. And I bought this knowing how much I was going to fish. And I want to get the most boat knowing I was going to be utilizing a small car. I, didn't, I don't have a truck and I don't see myself getting a truck uh, anytime in the near future. So trailering was not an option, uh, backing anything into the water. So if you have a small little economy car, you can absolutely do it. And not just put something on, not get something on the water, but you can get a really, um, you know, it's a great solution. So let me show you how this uh, setup works here. Um, one of the things I would really recommend is if you ever go into like a sporting goods store or whatever, you'll see the foam blocks. They often sell just an expensive kind of $30 or $40 foam block set. And uh, I, would, I would really, really stress to you guys to make the investment and to get a roof rack. Uh, this is a Thule Aero Rack, and um, the Aero just means that it's kind of streamlined. But it, the, the stability here is second to none. Uh, I've had this canoe, I think I'm going on four years, and I have over 100 trips on it. I had to kind of do the math, but I have over 100 trips. And every place I go to is like, over about an hour and over an hour from me it's all on highways so this thing is always at you know 60 65 miles an hour and you don't want you don't even want in the back of your head to have the idea this is going to come off so I would really really recommend you guys if you're going to do a small craft this or whatever else a kayak don't use the blocks sooner or later that's going to catch up to you uh, I had that originally and they were very scary and very sketchy Thule rack these things here from Thule are called uh, load stops okay and these aren't made for a canoe. They do have a canoe uh, rack or a canoe kind of attachment here, but I find these to be very, very effective. Uh, and so basically, as you can see, I have my straps going along the surface there. Those go underneath the bar. I pass them underneath, so that compresses the whole canoe uh, against the bar here. The load stops are compressing it from the sides, you know, from here, and then from the other side, they're compressing it in this direction. And then front to back, which is where your wind would kind of want to get up underneath, you have these uh, ratcheting uh, tie downs. This is actually part of the Thule kit. And with those pieces in place, this is extremely stable. Uh, I have, like I said, over 100 trips on it, and, uh, you know, at highway speed, so it's no problem. These things right here, all you do is, they're real tight, you put them on, and as you can see, they just kind of slide in there. And then in this case, with this canoe, they're going to compress against this foam. Uh, to me, that's not a big deal. Um, and it actually gives me a spot where I know where it's going. So you could use them on anything, but that just compresses the foam on this one. So anyway, guys, that's the first component is, no matter what vehicle you have, even if you have some little tiny economy car like I do. Like you can see, the canoe actually comes over the end. This is a 13-foot, 10-inch canoe. Uh, you can absolutely uh, get a, a decent-sized craft on top, and you can do it safely. All right, so that's uh, step one right there. Okay. Uh, another important thing and one, something I want to share with you guys, whether you're someone who's, uh, you're a younger guy, or that doesn't really matter, you could be big as a younger guy, but say you're of slight build. Um, I don't want to say even a, a woman, but I, I do believe that a lot of uh, uh, women could handle this canoe, getting it on and off. Um, if you're maybe somebody a little bit older and you just don't have the, the strength. What I want to show you and what was imperative to me is also the light weight uh, and the maneuverability and the, uh, the ability to, to take it on and off easily. Take these guys off. Now my technique is, having done it a little bit and you can figure it out very quickly, there's a balance point like with any canoe. Um, the fit is of medium height, uh, my particular vehicle. So what I do, and, and you'll just see, is I'm going to back it off to about here. 
And then the inside, because it's all foam lines, I'm actually just going to rest it on top of my head for a second and then back it up and put it onto my shoulder. Um, and because of the weight of the canoe at only 58 pounds, it's, it's not a lot of weight on your head and the foam makes it soft. It, it maybe seems a little unconventional, but it's, it's very easy and almost intuitive to do when you're taking it off a vehicle. There it's on my head. And I'm holding it, put it on the shoulder, and you go. What I'd like to demonstrate here is basically just what I did. Uh, just I want to cut, uh, leave no stone unturned is, is putting it down. As you see, you just it's, it's just not hard because of, again, that lightweight. And then, uh, so you're here, we'll simulate coming out of the water. You're all done. You've taken out your gear. Uh, how do you pick it up? Again, if you have two people, they have the handles on the front and rear. You could do it that way. But honestly, if I have someone with me, it's, it's almost more awkward to have that handle and to have it bumping into me. I usually just pick it up and throw it on my shoulder. And as you can see, um, I'm, I'm fit, but I'm not big. I'm six foot, about 160 pounds. So uh, I think it's something that really most people can do. Let me just show you how to pick it up. What I do is I just take it. I'm going to kind of roll it over almost, you know, onto my foot. Just by grabbing these handles here. And then that's it. I just kind of squat down, get underneath it, and put it on my shoulder. That's it. You got that balance point. And there you go, walking along.